previously on Sail in Chelsea, we arrived in La Rochelle and Ryan's mum and dad came out to visit. We found a cool bar and met some amazing people. Ryan lost his pump and had a clean up Plastic, in the marina. Bottles and cans. Poppy <laughs> tried out her new shoes, made a friend and had some more fun at the scene. And we fixed the sail button and had the repairs done from the crash, so we were all ready to cross Biscay. Where are we going? Slight change of plan. The weather's changed this morning, uh, the prediction, and it's looking really bad for Bijon. So we're Bijon. Going, Bijon, sorry. <laughs> So we're going to Santander and then we're going to hug the coastline and head up. It's going to add on about half a day, but it's better, what than, can being we do? better than being caught in 35 knots plus. So I think we're making the right choice. I do. We've just filled up with fuel on the fuel pontoon over there. Fuel is ridiculously expensive over here. Um, so if you are coming, then fill up elsewhere if you need fuel. This is the big marina. This is a different one. We went in this one. Cool little ship going out. Pops, are you ready? No, in your bed. You ready for a trip? Do you know where we're going? We're going to Spain. that we thought was coming in, it was sea fog, and uh, uh, it's like some of our in the Caribbean that we're sailing into. And just like that, it's over. We watched the sunset, had some dinner, and prepared for our first night crossing Biscay. So we are well into the night sail now. Completely pitch black, except for the moon. I'm in charge, Ryan's having a sleep. Um, and this is the first time that I've ever been on watch with Ryan actually asleep which is a little bit scary but I think I've got this um so this is our chart plotter we have just gone over um what's basically a huge cliff you can see here it's basically a huge cliff under under the sea it goes from about 105 meters deep to like 2471 meters deep um so it's pretty massive um I can't pronounce that but I think that's what it's called so, um, so yeah, a bit exciting. We've got a few boats around us that like miles and miles away, like eight miles, 16 miles, nautical miles. Um, so I think we're all good. So I don't know if you can see, but this is my little seat. Um, and yeah, I am on my first watch. <laughs> so Ryan's just had to wake me up. I am um, finished my shift and I was having a nice little sleep and oh, Ryan just had to wake me up because um, the sail bag has broken um, which isn't ideal so it means that all the ropes, all the lines are now hanging down as is um, the sail. So Ryan's trying to fix it. It's not ideal. Um, we're gonna have lines everywhere. Uh, it was the sun comes up in an hour. Well, I'm just debating whether we put up with it for an hour and then start and then do it in the sunlight. Or we'll do it now before another problem happens. What could happen from there? Well, if it chases through another line, I mean, say it chases through the main halyard, the whole sail will drop. What's what's rubbing? Because we're dead downwind, but because we kept driving whilst she was asleep, I just winched the sail in and thought I'd sort it out when you woke up. And I think that's why it's chafed through the 
sailbag lines. It's been doing this, and I think it's chafed through at the top. Um, but now it's done that, I'm worried about all the other halyards. So we motored on a little bit more. Um, but we're really worried that the sail's going to, where it's banging about so much, um, it's going to chafe through one of the other lines, which could end up meaning that the boom, which is the big long thing going along here, that chafes through the main sheet, will lose control of the boom and that will be flapping everywhere, which would be really, really bad. Um, or it could mean that it, it ruins the main halyard, which is the line that holds the sail all the way at the top. Um, and if that breaks, that's going to be a bit of a pain as well because the sail will, will just end up everywhere and the lines will end up in the water. Um, and because we're having to motor, if that gets wrapped around the propeller, it would also be really bad. So we've decided to just stop for a minute, lower the sails um, by hand slowly and see if we can kind of strap them down or strap the sail down. At least it will then not be up and won't be able to cause any more damage. So that is what we're doing. So we've dropped the sail by hand and tied it up with um, some rope and some of the reef lines. It's not pretty, but um, it will stop it from hopefully causing more damage to any of our other, our other um, sheets. With all this drama, Ryan's decided that now's the time to try and catch a fish. We all know he's not going to catch one anyway. It takes him a good 48 hours to even get a bite and then a dolphin steals it. Everyone loves a trier though, babe, yeah? I take it back, literally. <laughs> He's just put the fishing rope in. <laughs> no, what's it called? Fishing rod. Fucking hell. And I think he's caught a shark or something. It's more like a tree, probably. A tree? Probably. What's our depth? Does it still not hang? Uh, the depth is about 3,000 metres. So it, I don't think it's, it's anything from the bottom this time. Fucking <laughs> hell, the clutch is almost fully on. Do you have the skills to deal with this? No. But like you said earlier, God loves a trial, right? How much could we sell a big tuna for? Absolutely nothing. Oh. oh, Ryan, it's tiny. What? what? I mean it's tiny. It's like the size of a tender. I mean, it's the, it's the biggest one, yeah. Poor little thing. No. This has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> what can I do? Oh no. <laughs> what can I do? I don't know. Why would you do that to an animal? No. <laughs> oh, I can't lift it. Watch out. Shit. Oh my god. Tiny, is it? Oh no! Look at the mess! Alright, um, I don't know what to do because now I've got the fucking neck caught around the... You can't get it on deck. Look at the blood! Do you want to get something? Holy, let me get... Oh, it's like murder. Is it a tuna? Yeah, skipjack. Hello, 
Skipjack. You know the tuna that's in cans? Mm -hmm. It's that. Ah. Shut up. We've just saved ourselves a fortune. I can't believe it. It looks like we've killed someone in our tender. Would you say he's only tiny? He's not only tiny. We continued our journey across Biscay. It was a beautiful day and we even saw Robin at sea, 43 miles offshore. Da -da -la! So we are finally here. We've done our um, night sail. We are in Santander. Slightly different to what we planned, but we had the issue of the sail. Um, and weather, I think, is going to turn a bit nasty, so, yes. Um, but this is it. It looks beautiful so far. That's that side. So, yeah, very exciting. Just about to pick up a mooring boy so that we can stay here for tonight, and then we will be off. I think we're doing another night sail tomorrow. But, yeah. Hola, Santander. Go and say hola. So we've just done our Biscay crossing, um, it took 34 hours to complete. We've come to Santander and this is the marina. Um, the people here are all really, really lovely. It's really expensive, it's the most expensive marina that we've stayed in. And there's not really anything here, there's one bar, which is quite nice, um, but that's it. So probably wouldn't recommend staying here. It's because it's out of town though, isn't it? Yeah, it's very out of town. We haven't actually been to Santander, the main main town um so we don't know what that's like but we're leaving tomorrow to continue our leg um and hopefully get a little bit further probably do another night sail tomorrow because we really enjoyed this one um so yeah but we're here we're alive this game wasn't that bad um and yeah job done next time i panic going up the mast oh i don't like it it's pulling me down we see some more dolphins and have a really scary time entering a marina. We find some cool things on the beach that get annoyed about the amount of plastic. And there is just plastic everywhere. We find an underground tunnel up a mountain and explore some of the beautiful rears in Spain.